Okay, it's day 16, and as you can see, there's not that much of a difference. It seems like there's a little bit more uh, greening of this particular bud. So this is by far the most promising. This one seems to be making a slight bit of progress. This bud on the large cross-sectional slice is doing well. Um, these buds still haven't turned green. Since ginger is tropical in origin, I think it might need more moisture at this point. I doubt there would be any roots coming out of the bottom of these rhizome cuttings, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep watering this. The top of the soil is almost dry. It's day 17 of the ginger germination experiment. So as you can see, I've made a new innovation. I put a sheet of saran wrap, it's just plastic thin wrap, over this without using tape or a rubber band to affix it around the edges. Just a few minutes ago when the sun was still shining on this, in conjunction with the two reflectors, it was starting to steam up, so I watered copiously last night, and the top of the soil is already appearing a little dry because it's been a hot day, and the sun is getting more and more bright, and uh, the intensity of the sunlight is also increasing as the days pass by and we approach uh, the summer equinox. So the purpose of this saran wrap, of course, as you can see with the condensation, is to increase the amount of humidity. Ginger is a tropical plant, so I figure increasing the humidity and trapping heat inside, sort of giving this uh, greenhouse effect, would work to its advantage. At least for the time being, I think it could help accelerate growth a little bit. Obviously, when the plant gets too big, uh, you don't want to do something like this. Um, well, it's possible, but you'd need larger and larger, you know, plastic shells to put over your ever-growing plant. So that just goes to show how much water is evaporating from potted plants like this every day. I mean, the soil was thoroughly wet, at least in the top half of this pot, yesterday night, and throughout the day it's been evaporating. And it only took a few minutes um, of putting this saran wrap on before I noticed there was a condensation already. So I think it's working. And I didn't wrap it tightly, so as you can see, um, for example, under the edges, there are various you know air pockets where carbon dioxide can get in, oxygen can get out, etc., there can still be some gaseous exchange, but the humidity is pretty high in there. And because the dirt is dark colored, essentially when the reflectors uh, send some light to hit that, and the sunlight comes in through the saran wrap, it'll heat that dark colored dirt up a lot. And, you know, that'll evaporate the water, and the water vapor will be largely trapped in here. Um between the plants and the saran wrap. So I know I'm losing a little bit of light um, due to deflection, or refraction, or whatever. But, you know, it definitely, I think, gives a big benefit to keep the tops of these rhizome cuttings moist and the shoots moist. Okay, it's been over six hours since I put that sheet of saran wrap on, and there have been some changes. Um, it's amazing how much moisture collects and condenses on this plastic sheet. Just a minute ago, there was a bead of water that dropped down and touched one of these uh, ginger rhizome cuttings. So if I'm not mistaken, development has been accelerated in just that six hours alone. Maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention when I came home, but I think this one has definitely developed these like nodes, so to speak, um, around the perimeter. And this seems to be more pronounced. Um, this seems to be coming out of a something else. I think this is a shoot system coming out of a, the bud itself, you know, it's splitting open. Uh, this one I can't tell as much of a difference, but it seems to be following the same course, you know, it's going to split out of this thing and that will become the shoot system. What I've noticed is this skin around the bud has become a little flaky. I don't think it was quite that way uh, just a few hours ago. And finally we have this one, so there's more greening that's occurring. So I think moisture is definitely a big key in ginger germination, or at least the acceleration of it. Okay, it's day 18 of this ginger germination experiment. So as you can see, I've placed a square of uh, plastic wrap, saran wrap, on top. And that's worked remarkably. I mean, there are still gaps in the side where, you know, all sorts of gaps where, you know, gaseous exchange can still occur. So I'm not worried about this thing not getting enough uh, carbon dioxide. But anyway, it 
looks great. You know, it, it's very steamy. It's basically simulating a jungle environment while during the day all this, you know, sunlight beats down from the reflectors, you know, from all sorts of directions and the direct sunlight and that hits the dark colored soil, uh, it gets absorbed and plus you have all the sunlight hitting this pot and warming it up from the sides. So you can see all the water running off. You can certainly just keep reusing this piece of plastic. So I can't really tell what's going on um, at this end. You know, basically it has these sort of notes sticking out. It almost looks like it's differentiating into a root ball, which shouldn't be, you know, because this is green. It should be photosynthesizing, but this brown section, I don't know what that deal is. I mean, I think uh, the saran wrap was touching that. Maybe it was wet all day for 24 hours. Uh, I don't think 24 hours is long enough of a time for something to start rotting. Uh, this bud still is pure white and you know if you're ever wondering about that that's just some soil artifact but this looks like a healthy shoot system waiting to happen it reminds me sort of like a bamboo bud or something so then again there's another bud on the side of this so for this bottom cross-sectional piece this bud is coming along nicely it's very green Still not that much progress here, you know, I don't even see, sort of see a hint of green. I'm not sure if that's just a camera illusion. And this is the second most well-developed piece. And these buds are green and uh, things are ready to happen. We just need to wait. So I know it's not going to be very easy to pour, but uh, here goes. Just kind of got to give it some speed. Okay, you can see the water level rising. Okay, so I filled the bottom with water. It's got a little room to spare, but you know, it's just enough for our purposes. That should last two weeks, but since I've wet the top of the soil, I'm not quite sure, you know, the instructions say to water from the top for a week, which I sort of did until the last half of the week, and then to start only watering from the bottom. So I'm not sure if that mechanism will work. If the soil was all bone dry, maybe it would take too long, and these plants don't like to be dry. So what I think is going on here is um, each one of these buds, as I've been calling them, are independent root and shoot system. So these are roots and that's the shoot system because when I look at this it basically has roots coming out. So they're looking for the bottom and this would be the shoot system. So unless I'm mistaken that's a whole new independent plant from that. And these are merely you know shoot apical meristems with root apical meristems going downwards you know, they just happen to be attached to the same plant battery or uh, storage of nutrition that we know as a modified subterranean stem, a rhizome. So I think I'm going to lay low with this uh, saran wrap actually because I just watered so much and put water in the plant spa tray. So I don't think this plants, so I don't think these plants are going to be wanting for water anytime soon. But if I see any signs of trouble, I'll definitely bury these underground. So this happened after I woke up the next morning. After a night's sleep, I decided that, in fact, what I said yesterday was true. Those, each bud is an individual plant, and it has roots that are going to struggle to get in without drying out into the dirt from even a centimeter or two in height above the soil line. So basically, I'm pushing these down and making everything subterranean except for the buds. The buds are already photosynthesizing as shown by their green color, which means the cells are all synthesizing chlorophyll and the chloroplast. Hence, I'm bearing all the rhizome cuttings down to what I believe to be the correct depth with regards to the soil level. So now the buds can still photosynthesize and get carbon dioxide and oxygen it, that they need from the air 
while the root system only has to go down. You know, it's right there within the dirt. And this way everything will be a lot more moist and those that haven't germinated those two chunks probably have a much better shot now. It's day 19. So one thing that shocked me was I filled this with water and it's literally bone dry today. The tray is dry. So the way this plant spa works is I'm supposed to fill that bottom tray with water and you know it's supposed to water the plant through evaporation. You know it's essentially kind of a water distiller with uh, water condensing and being absorbed into the dry soil underneath through these little plastic slits. So I think there might be something else going on. Um, you know, maybe the bottom of the soil in this pot was just bone dry and everything got wicked up immediately. But um, I don't think that's through evaporation alone. I think looking at the structure of the bottom before, you know, if you go back to the footage a few days earlier when I showed these pots without soil in them, there's this uh, uh, cross or I mean cross hatch pattern in the bottom and I think that could have had you know slits in it I'm not sure I think it didn't have slits in it so I'm, I, I don't think the water has any direct contact with the dirt so that's why I'm kind of puzzled at you know where the water went because the carpet's not wet either so all we're left with at this point is some neat little buds sticking out and you know this more and more reminds me of bamboo and that was the tip that I was kind of worried, you know, is it rotting? Uh, the one in the middle should do a lot better now since it has access to soil and moisture. And these two buds should do well. Um, this one is mostly buried now. But that one bud should have no problems uh, taking root. These two buds are doing fine on the small piece, you know. The bottom one is more green now. Okay, it's day 20. And as you can see, there's still some water in there. So I know that after I pushed all of these ginger rhizome cuttings down into the soil, just below the surface, it's not as interesting visually to look at. But you know, you can see these buds are getting a little bit more green. So I'm not entirely convinced that this plant spa can provide all the moisture these buds need to germinate. Maybe I should try the saran wrap one more time. So here you can see some greening. For this rhizome cutting, there's a lot of green now, so I expect good things to happen. And if we look over here, this is the most developed one in the center. On the left you have what basically looks like a bamboo shoot. I'm sure it has roots that are burrowing into the soil as we speak. And this middle bud, you know, that was just on top of the rhizome cutting for a long time, so... I don't think it had enough moisture to be able to germinate well and send out roots. And here you have another shoot system going on. So this was the one I was concerned about. That it sort of looked like it was rotting. So if I were to do the plastic wrap thing one more time, at least it wouldn't be resting on this and having it soak directly. 